Hello, welcome to Monday Night Live 63. We're uh, we're getting uh, everything organised here, so um, uh, we're just getting uh, YouTube up and going. Um, so, hello everyone, welcome. Um, I haven't even got the comments up. I'm very well organised tonight. Um, I hope everyone's really, really well. Uh, tonight we're going to talk a little bit, well a whole lot, about uh, kids metal detecting. It's Easter time of course, so uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, Andrew's here, Roger, Henny, g'day Henny, how you going? Steve Weirden's here. Uh, everyone's here. Um, that's great news. So, um, so Mark's here, and Linda, stacks and stacks of people here. Uh, Ray Ray, up for a good night, good stuff. Rodney's here. Um, looks like, uh, da -da -da. we'll just see if we can get this stream going here. So Andrew's here, Dean, Young Guns are here. It's good the Young Guns are here. Um, because uh, tonight is actually sponsored by the Young Guns, Mick, Haley, Andrew, and Damo. Uh, Damo is uh, is the gun up there at the moment, so the others are catching up pretty well. So, um, okay, so we've just got this uh, YouTube up and going, I think. Uh, I've left the uh, I've left the uh, prizes down on the floor if you're wondering what I was doing. So tonight's uh, uh, tonight's uh, tonight's prizes. Sorry, guys, I'm just trying to get this YouTube uh, up and going. Um, it's not uh, ready, and everyone's over there ready and waiting. So uh, we'll have to uh, we'll have to see what's going there. Um, so it's a fantastic this YouTube business. Anyway, we'll I'll poke along with that on the side. So tonight's uh, prize, of course, is uh, a Garrett Gold pan. These are a little Prospector pan, ten inch pan. They're a third uh, twenty five dollar. Uh, um, $25 pan, really, really good kid size pan. So it's only a 10 inch pan. So if you can get a bit of an idea of that. And then, uh, of course, a bag of pay dirt. Now, we only had $70 bags of pay dirt left. So we've got two of those. Uh, two, so we've got two pans, two bags of pay dirt for tonight's prizes. Sensational. So, uh, I don't quite know what's going on with YouTube. G'day, uh, Jason from WA, Chris, Trevor, um, Mel. So, what we're going to cover tonight is, because it's Easter, it's school holidays, there's a bit of uh, stuff going on, um, uh, lots of kids kicking around, what do we do with them? So, we're going to do, uh, well, I'm going to actually probably tell you a bit what I do with my young bloke. Um, I also want to cover the nugget hunt. I'm going to do that a couple of times. Um, and uh, the nugget uh, hunt at uh, uh, Carrara. Um, there's still a few spots there. So um, there's, there's still a number of spots there. And that's going to be a fantastic event. Um, and... Uh, so that's just f fantastic um, out there. And then I've had lots of questions about the ute. Um, I've been a bit quiet on the ute um, simply because uh, simply because I've been flat out. I'm a fraction overwhelmed. I've taken too much on, as is normal uh, for me. So um, yes. So it appears like yet again. YouTube is not working. Uh, it appears like 
armadillo and can't get this thing to work. So anyway, we are going to abandon this YouTube business uh, for, the e for the evening. And uh, we're actually going to, I'll actually, I'll delete that now so no one's sitting over there waiting. So I'll put the, if you, if you watch, want to watch it on YouTube, it'll go up straight away after this show. So we'll just concentrate on Facebook. Uh, anyway, so that's what we got on. So, Young Guns Metal Detectors. Let me talk about Young Guns Metal Detectors. Mick, Damien, Haley, Andrew. They're the guns, mix the dad, and they do a whole stack of uh, uh, detecting just for kids in the cent uh, Queensland Central Coast. So they've kindly sponsored the, sh sponsored the show tonight with these uh, pay dirt, uh, two ba two, two, a pan and a pay dirt by two. So um, that's very, very uh, good of them. So thanks very much to the Young Guns. So get over there and like their page. Um, so that's uh, fantastic of them. Thanks very much. So Young Guns Metal Detector page. I saw them here a minute ago. Click on the link, go over and... Uh, Love their page. So, um, um, so then I also want to have a quick mention um, with the uh, Aussie Gold Hunters um, are looking for punters to go on their TV show. So, um, um, so if you're, they're really looking for miners, someone who's a bit serious. So, if you've got a mine and you're watching. And you want to be a TV star? Get on to Aussie Gold Hunters. Their posts are everywhere on Facebook. I didn't bother putting it on the Gold Diggers page because you can see it on every other gold prospecting page. So, Aussie Gold Hunters, if you want to be a TV star, they're looking for people. So get amongst that. Um, so. The Nugget Hunt. Let's talk about the Nugget Hunt, okay? So, I don't know whether I'm allowed to release this yet, but bugger it, I'm going to. But, um, so the bit of the schedule is going to be sort of a training. People are going to be available for training on that Thursday. So we're going to have, I think the dawn service is organised. Then there's going to be a, like a mine lab expert 7,045... SDC sort of workshop if anyone wants to attend. Um, then there's going to be, I think it's me then, which I'll get do Garrett. Um, I think after me is sort of Cleggy and, uh, oh no, Dustin with his sluices and all that stuff. Dustin will be out there answering questions. Then Cleggy with the XP gear. And then really if you've got another type of machine, all of us really can give you a hand with it. We may not be an expert with it, but all of us can give you a hand with it. Someone will be there who'll be an expert. I'll guarantee you that. So, but the big news is that I believe uh, Donny has uh, secured a uh, geologist, which would be uh, which is going to be fantastic to do a bit of talk and be uh, be around for everyone. Um, if you've got those sort of questions to ask, so. Um, it's 24th, 25th, 26th, 27th, so it goes the Anzac Day through to the Sunday. You can come four days, you can come two days, you can come, you know, if you're there for a week, I won't be there for a week, I'm afraid. So, but um, yes, so Donnie's just posted the link in the comments, so uh, get on that um, if, you, um, if you get a chance. Apparently, apparently, if it comes off, these geologists are, well, one of them has got a thousand stories, so we might be, uh, that might be a long session, which I'm looking forward to, so. Now, um, let's talk about the ute, okay? So, for those that missed it, I bought a 1984 HJ47. Um, it's got... Only because the Triton wasn't coping. Um, so, uh, and I've always loved those vehicles. So I bought that ute. It's got a 6.2 litre Chevy diesel engine in it. Um, so it's a 
it's a beautiful thing to drive. Um, and it's got an extended chassis, which I wanted a big vehicle because I've got so much gear. So, um, so yes, so the, so the Ute is still going, so, so it's still, still happening. I just haven't taken any video of it uh, recently. I'm gonna take some later in the, later in the week. Um, so the air conditioning wasn't working and with that big engine and not a lot of insulation in those old trucks, it was pretty hot in there. I think a, a trip out to Warwick, your feet felt like they were roasted. roasted uh, oh, Richard's got a 1981 here, beautiful Richard. Um, you felt your feet felt like they were a bit of roasted ham by the end of the trip. So anyway, um, it had air conditioner in it, which didn't work. So that was just a hose. Got that fixed. Uh, I've ended up with a canopy, a nice jack off canopy, a fiberglass canopy for it. Um, so that's sensational. I've got this thing, the coolest thing I've ever, I think I've ever seen. Has anyone seen Road Shower? I've got a road shower for the top of it. It's like this black aluminium tube, right? That's got a pressure hot hot uh, shower in it. Um, so um, yeah, um, so that's fantastic. Solar panel on the roof, uh, or the canopy. I'm not doing a dual battery system in the truck. I'm doing a. Uh, I'm doing a. Um, I'm actually doing a solar panel on the roof of the canopy and a feeding directly into a uh, battery in the canopy so it won't be hooked up to the truck. So I want the fridge to be able to run when I jack the canopy off. So um, so that's, and what else is, oh there's been stacks of stuff with the ute. I'll have to take, uh, I'll, have to, I'll have to do a proper video and a proper walk around. So um, I haven't done a whole stack to it. I've just been cleaning it up and sorting it out and um, Oh, the, the, I replaced the speakers, a few bits and pieces, you know, so um, I've been, we've been just so busy, so overcommitted here, so um, it's an absolute pleasure to drive that vehicle, so, um, and it's still got, uh, like it's got, um, it hasn't got power steering, which I'm getting used to now, so um, yeah, it'll, it's, a, it's a phenomenal truck, so anyone coming out to the Nugget Hunt, um, it will be it will be making its first public appearance out there. We might even run a competition to find if we can work out a name for it. So um, I was going to let my son name it, but he's just he just keeps calling it the monster truck. So he's in the monster trucks at the moment anyway. So anyway, um, yes. So um, now speaking of my, speaking of uh, my young bloke, um, we'd better get into. Uh, we better get into what we're supposed to be talking about. But before we do that, don't forget to share to, for tonight's prize, which is a, a pan, a uh, little uh, Garrett uh, backpacker pan and a uh, 60 buck bag of pay dirt, $70 bag of pay dirt. So that's tonight's prize. Where am I gonna put that? I've got too much stuff here. So, um, so that's tonight's prize, share to win. We'll draw it at the end. There's two of them going off tonight. So, so let's talk about Easter kids um, and uh, what to do with them. So here's my little offsider. Um, he can operate that little detector. He's got a little bounty hunter junior. Um, he can. Uh, his swing is terrible. I've, I've tried to correct his uh, swing technique, but he's just a little young yet um, for the for the swing swing technique. Um, but, and he doesn't quite get that, uh, he doesn't quite get that the screen tells him what the target is. He thinks everything's treasure. So, um, yeah, he's, he's just stoked. The, prob the big problem I've got is that he, he, I reckon three or four times a week he wants to go treasure hunting. So, um, and of course I can't quite go three or four times a week, so. Anyway, um, so that's my little offsider there, um, and uh, yeah, he is just obsessed with it. So, and really, um, every like someone made a point there. It's all treasure to Finn. The enjoyment, like, 
he's it's good because he's actually got me into relic hunting um, a little bit more because it's easier to go down the park or the beach with him and I you know he's too young to drag out to the gold fields with the snakes and the ticks and stuff yet um, but he sort of got me into it and the excitement um, the excitement that uh, he has about finding a two dollar two cent coin or a dollar coin is just absolutely incredible he will just boom straight over to his mom look look treasure 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 and uh so he is just he's he's bought a real joy to finding stuff in the park so um yeah it's a um yeah it's an absolutely fantastic thing to do uh with him so um and the, the most important thing is to not just let them sit on iPads and phones and computer games and all that stuff all the time. Like, I, I must admit, with that little young bloke there, we we quite often, we sort of talk about it, you know, we plug him in. Like, if we've got stuff to do, you put him in front of that iPad and you won't hear boo from him. But... And I think that's a reality of modern living that, you know, that's, that's, how, that's how it works. But we really get him outside. He's outside a lot, a real lot, playing and digging holes and carrying on. So I think that, you, well, you know, if my mother was watching, she would say, oh, he spends too much time on that iPad. Well, probably, but he also, like, when it's sunny outside and it's, you know, he's outside all day, every day. So it's a balancing act. Um, both Annette and I work, so it's not as simple as, you know, someone's always around sort of thing. So, you know, it's a really, it's a balancing act and we, you know, we talk about it a lot. So, um, but he actually, I've actually handed him, I, ages and ages ago, I did this. I went and bought these folders. So they're just coins, all the years of coins, like 50 cents and two dollars. He was very upset with me tonight when I, because these now live in his room. So pennies and everything, um, you know, and there's a few in here, nothing of any value that we've found. You know, there's a few there. These are really, really good books that are very quite they're not overly expensive on eBay so so these are now his now and these are his treasures sort of thing so we've you know we and, and we're, we're working together to fill up these things I think there's two two cent coin book here and 20s and you know so you can get them for everything um, but um, that's a fantastic thing so they're he, they're his treasures and they're his books so um and we get a we get a coin he'll find a two dollar coin or he'll find a he'll find a uh he'll find most things and we'll clean it up and put a bit of um we, we got some wax there there's a taborious wax put a bit of that wax on it um so it's a real father and son sort of bonding thing so um he, he just absolutely is obsessed with it sort of thing so i realize that um i realize that at some stage in the point uh, future he will realize that a two two cent coin is not worth as much at the shops as a two dollar coin so i realize that that my my future is uh is looking for gold coins with him so uh um yeah so, um, right, so I'm a stack of comments behind. Thomas is here. Mario uh, is here. Nick, Kim, Frank's here. G'day, Frank. Kyle's here. Uh, what was that Kyle saying? Talking to Donnie there. Jason. Um, so, yeah. But, um, anyway. Um, so, all good. 
Um, there was only one coin fell out. It fell... The penny book's pretty full, so... Uh, but uh, that's a... Uh, what's that? 1912. So, uh, yeah. So, um, it's all back together now. He won't be cranky at me. So, it was only one book. One, one. Oh, that one keeps falling out. The little flap's not on, so we'll leave it there, sort of thing. Go, okay, David and uh, Nikki and Andrew. Um, so, so I've sort of come about that, uh, you know, telling a story there, but I got a bit carried away. So, one of the things we do, we we do is I make it into a collector. So we've got, um, although we haven't got many at the moment, we've got some buttons. Um, and they're extra special. They've got little gem jars. They're sitting in little gem jars. So we really, the interest isn't just the detecting. The interest is actually after we're detecting, we clean them up. You know, I do a bit of research on it and we say, oh, well, that's a military badge. The army used that. And then we, you know, we talk about the army for the next two days sort of thing. So, um, so, but that's the interest in him. And, you know, his grandfather comes over and he shows him the new button he found and, you know. Um, so, um, so, whatever you're detecting, collect it. And let them collect it and let them be involved with collecting it. Because that is, I have found, half the fun for the young bloke is, um, yeah, is actually getting out there and, um, and, and, and doing a bit afterwards when we get home. So, um, so that's, that's just uh, fantastic. So, um, part of that is that we always bring home a big stack of rubbish. Um, and that's part of, you know, I've taught him to, you know, dig a plug and, um, and you know, we pick up rubbish um, all the time. We walk into a few little areas that there's there's a there's a bit of rubbish around and he puts that puts his hands on his hip and he goes, What a mess. So um, you know, and we and we 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 clean that up and um, and he comes home and he tells his mother there's mess everywhere and uh, yeah, so it's 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 fantastic for him. So um, the other thing I do is I will actually duck out without him um, and I will pre, oh, sort of pre-hunt an area. Like, and the, like this, they have to be fine and stuff. The moment you're not fine and stuff, there's trouble. So I pre-hunt an area. I've got about three or four areas that I know I've got some coins in them um, and, um, and then, so, and if there's no coins, I'll carry a few coins and, you know, if I have to, I'll plant them for him. Because um, if he's not finding anything, it's just all over the place. So, um, so that's, my, that's my number one thing with kids, is they have to be finding stuff. So if that means you need to go out and, um, and, and establish an area well beforehand, know that there's coins there, that's the way to do it sort of thing. So, um, yeah, so, right, I've got missed a few, missed a few questions there. Uh, Mark, yeah, he collects the rubbish as well. Uh, yeah, clean it up. You gotta, you gotta clean up, uh, um, you gotta clean up, like people leave. I, I know out in the gold fields there, you go out there and someone's dug a big hole and, um, and there's a thousand drink bottles around it, water bottles. So they've just thrown them up on the side of the bank and they've left it. So, um, yeah. So, um, right. So, like, you've got to, like, I know I didn't put them there, but I'll clean them up, you know. Like, that teaches him good habits and teaches, you know, teaches, yeah. Anyway, and hopefully someone sees me doing it and he's the bugger that dropped them and, you know, feels a bit guilty. Anyway, uh, tonight's show sponsored by uh, the Young Guns Metal Detectors. So thanks very much to Young Guns.
uh, pan and gold uh, uh, pay dirt. Uh, $70 bag of pay dirt and a uh, gold pan, a Garrett gold pan. The best gold pans I reckon going around. Um, so there's two of those to give away tonight. Um, and uh, yes, so two tonight. So, um, so happy days there. Um, all you gotta do is share, and if you've come a fraction late, there's a few here that have come a fraction late. Um, I'm Ben from Gold Digger. got a little shop here in Brisbane. We do this every Monday night uh, live on Facebook, and I have no idea how I did it uh, for a Monday night live 60, where I did it perfectly on YouTube. Now I have no idea how to do it on YouTube. But uh, anyway, Every Monday night we're here. Um, I had I had big visions. I spent an hour setting up YouTube tonight. Still couldn't get the bloody thing to work. But anyway, um, we'll work something out. Now let's talk about detectors. Um, uh, so the little detector that Finn's got is a Bounty Hunter Junior. Okay. Uh, it's a target ID, it's got three targets on the top, it's got a sad emoji, an ordinary emoji, and a happy emoji, right? So it's got a little bit of discrimination, you can actually turn them off if you don't want to hear the, the other noise. Uh, 159 bucks, fantastic little machine. You can get cheaper machines, uh, but from my experience they're a bit hit and miss whether they work too well. But he, in that photo there, he would have been about two and a half, I suppose. So that's a few months ago. And that was a fraction uh, tall for him. But it's perfect for him now. Um, he's three now, almost three. So that's perfect for him. Um, so, yeah. Um, uh, so you can get him in that young. The other alternative you have is the uh, is the ace uh, the ace ace range from Garrett. Um, you can actually get a short stem for them. You can actually get them. They're only about thirty two centimeters long, so you can shorten those out ace machines right up. They're not overly dear. I think they're about forty nine bucks, something like that. Um, and of course, the Go Find series from Mine Lab. Um, that they've got the collapsible shaft, so. Um, so they're probably the three picks. I think the GoFind 22, although a lot of people say it's not a good machine, it's a very, very, price-wise, it's a very, you know, it's it's very good value for money for the price of it sort of thing. So, um, yeah. Um, so, so they're probably the three options. I know you can get them from everywhere now, Target and... Kmart and National Geographic shops. I've tested even JCar. I've tested a couple of them. I haven't tested all of them, and found them pretty ordinary compared to GoFinds, Aces, and these little bounty hunter things that Finn uses. So, um, and you'll find that if you stick to these bigger brands, Bounty Hunter or Garrett or Mine Lab, that little blue machine that Finn uses quite often gets used as a sword. So, you know, it's, um, it's, it's a, you know, they're quite a robust little machine. So are the go fine, so are the aces, you know, as much as I try to stop him from, you know, hitting things with it, he just loves it, you know? So, um, yeah, Andrew's, Andrew's kid's got a uh, Xterra 305. So that sort of quality of machine is is just fantastic. So, um, yeah. So, um, yeah. Um, a lot of people giggling at the sword. Yes, he does. Yes. He's a three-year-old boy who likes to tear stuff up. So, yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know. That's how it is, and, it, and it's lasted, what is it now? He's probably had access to it for oh, eight or nine months now. Um, so, uh, yeah, he's just, yeah, he's a bit, uh, people say I'm a little bit overactive. No, he's he's mental, so uh, he's just a, uh, 
Yeah. Yeah. No, he's um he's been Captain America lately and uh with his with the um shield and the Oh yeah. So he'll be anything, so uh yeah. Right, um okay, so so what I'm saying there is don't spend a fortune. Don't go and buy a six-year-old kid an ORX unless you want an ORX. Because, you know, you don't need to spend a lot of money to get into a decent machine that will keep the kids entertained, particularly on the beach. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about locations in a minute. But, um, yeah. So the other thing you, you want to do... Um, is you don't want to take them somewhere where it's really, really hard to dig. So, like a lot of the gold fields are probably the wrong place um, to take a young kid because the ground's too hard to dig. You know, it's a pretty toxic, it can be a pretty toxic envi uh, environment. Um, but, yeah, so... My advice is look for areas that are easy to dig. So we've got a rule in the park here. If we can't hear it with the pin pointer, right, we don't go near it. Um, so, um, and and it's a rough park. It's not a beautiful park. But if, it, if we can't hear it with the pin pointer, we don't, we don't dig it sort of thing. So that's how we start. Um, and that's with a orange carrot, Garrett carrot. Um, so it, it, it reaches down about that far. So we just know that's our limit and we get the stuff off the top. So uh, the beach is a sensational place to be. If it wasn't an hour's drive uh, to a beach, um, you know, we'd probably go to the beach. So, but part of the fun for Finn is uh, digging up the, gra digging up the, uh, um, digging up the soil sort of thing, I think. Um, you know, he'll find a rock and he'll, the rock becomes the treasure as well as the coin or the button or the, you know, aluminium can, whatever we're digging up. So, uh, yeah, Spiro, Spiro says, I told the wife the dais was for the kids. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm not knocking that. Don't worry about that. So, uh, yeah. So, um, yeah. Um, righto. So dark side sword fight, sword fights. Now they'd be something to see. The dark side camp, all with their detectors out, getting stuck into it. So um, yeah. Um, hello, Nicole. Um, Nicole, a five-year-old just asked me to say hi to you, Ben, because he's talking about his detector. Yes, it's a very good detector. Um, I don't know your name, Nicole's son, but uh, I'd say a lady if I did. But uh, you got a good detector there. Um, yeah, so. Um, so, um, so I do want to talk about, um, I do want to talk about, uh, I do want to talk about, talk about taking kids to the gold fields, right? Because... Um, because the, and Jason, uh, Jason McDonald just asked, uh, any of the detectors any good in the wet sand? Probably not. Um, they won't run stable. Um, um, in the dry sand, perfect. Dry sand beaches, that sort of thing. Um, you need a machine that ground balances like Equinox Max, uh, 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 XP. You need those sort of machines to get to the uh, beach, so. Um, Damon just asks, how are you going with the claim on the creek? Mystery Creek. Mystery Creek has, has, uh, Mystery Creek is a, well, it's a pain in the back end, but anyway, it, it's involving a lot of government departments because of where it's situated, so, it's almost to the stage now where it's become too hard. I have another uh, iron in the fire, so to speak, um, which I hope to be able to release the details on that in about three weeks time. Um, hopefully it will be bigger and better than Mystery Creek. Um, 
so um, yes, so that is that is uh, yeah, that's to come. So um, stay tuned for that. So um, uh, da, da, da. right, um, I've just got to find see if the if there's any. Uh, Right, let me just see, Nikki's Nikki, we have to use my sons in the dry sands or it keeps going off. Yeah, Nikki, that. So these cheaper machines, they don't have a ground balance on them. So as soon as you take them into that mineralized salt water, they they will do that. Um, the only way to cope with that is to wind the sensitivity back. If you don't have a ground balance, then you don't get a lot of depth. But there's that balance sort of thing. If you have got the if you have got discrimination on it. Uh, you can, so when I talk about discrimination now, I was talking about the emojis on that bounty hunter junior. Um, it's got three emojis. So it's got a sad emoji for like iron and then a middle, a, a middle emoji. I don't know what you call the middle emojis. Let's just call him the middle emoji. And then the happy emoji. Okay. So if you, if you, if you, if you turn off the lower end of that discrimination. So the sad emoji, right? The machine becomes a lot more usable in the salt water, okay? But you will be missing targets. So, um, so that's my, uh, my advice. But also bear in mind, when Finn and I have gone down the beach, it also, most of these machines I'm talking about aren't waterproof. And so, I actually say to him, no, it doesn't work in the wet sands. You've got to come up. It gives me that little bit of buffer so the machine doesn't get drowned. So, because I know the first thing he'll do when he gets in the water is drop it and it'll be dead. So, um, yeah. So, um, yeah. Um, okay, so then um, let's just talk about the gold fields. I started off on that track and didn't get there. So, gold fields for kids. So we're talking about snakes, we're talking about ticks, we're talking about normally, like certainly in the Queensland gold fields, WA gold fields, a lot of these gold fields, you're talking about rocky areas, not a lot of grass, not a lot of water, not necessarily a good environment to take a kid. Did I mention mine shafts? Did I mention baits for dogs? Did I mention all this stuff? So. The safe way to do it, right? And I need to, I need to just say, like someone young like my bloke, I'm, I, I haven't really taken him out there yet. But this is a picture from Blue Dog Prospecting, who takes his kids out. I suppose his kids would be five or six. Blake from Blue Dog. If you're taking him to a creek like that, that you know the area, right? You're pretty sure you, you know there's not a lot of mine shafts. You you know that you know the area, right? That's a wonderful place to take a kid to. Okay, it's a completely different um, place to take a kid to than a more traditional gold field where it's certainly in Queensland. Traditional gold fields are just a disaster. So um, so we are actually planning a trip into northern New South Wales. And we're going to get, uh, uh, apparently there's a creek down there that has, well, they're quartz crystal. They're actually quartz crystals um, in this creek, but they've been tumbled and they were, they're not worth much, but we're gonna go for a swim. I actually think it might be get, starting to get a bit cold now, but we're gonna see if we can go down the next few weeks. But, um, but it's a creek like this and you can snorkel in it and pick up the, quartz crystal so that's the sort of thing that are good for the kids um, you're there with them sort of thing and the problem the other problem with the gold fields is the everyone knows how few and far between gold nuggets are so detecting with kids is probably not the best the best way forward however panning in a creek like this on a hot summer's day is probably uh, something that the kids would enjoy and if you got a bit of color They will love picking it out with a pair of tweezers or a snuffer bottle sort of thing. So um, But yeah, 
So my, uh, yeah. And we're talking about younger kids here. Paul uh, Stopsy mentions here that the boys are 11 and 13. Um, yeah. Um, you know, they, and they go well on the gold. And I suppose it's how your kids are brought up to. Um, you know, if, you, if you're just getting into this and your kids are 13, 14, they've never been out of the city, they're going to need some education if you're taking them out into some rough area. So, um, yeah. Um, Aaron, I believe that creek, Blake, Blake from uh, Blue, uh, Blue Dog Prospecting uh, sent me that photo. I believe that's the central coast of New South Wales somewhere at a guess. So, um, yeah. So, it, it, it's, um, yeah. So, right. Um, Nikki says the water's getting cold in the creeks. Yeah, I thought it would be. I'm bloody, I missed the chance to take the young bloke down to this creek that I've heard of. has got these crystals in it and go and have a look. So, it's also a four hour drive, which he won't be stoked about it. Four hours is a long way for a three year old for a swim. So, right. So, um, so that's a great way to prospect um, if you've got kids, right? If you've got the gold fever, we, we, all, we all have it in varying degrees. Well, some of us have. This is the way to get your fix in as well as the kids. Um, rugged in winter, but um, yeah. Um, so panning, that sort of thing. Crystals, much, much simpler than gold sort of thing. Um, so we, we we sort of covered most of the we covered a little bit on um, actually before we do that um, tonight's show young guns metal detectors thank you very much uh, the young guns um, if you if you aren't on their page get over to their page like the page because they do some fantastic things with the kids uh, they've donated two of these a gold pan and a uh, Pay dirt bag, seventy dollar pay dirt bag. So well done, thanks very much, Mick. Um, and the kids, um, yes. Yeah, so um, yeah. Um, so all you need to do is share this by the end of the show. You got about fifteen minutes left to share it. So Jason's asking, or not Jason? James is asking. Um, the Aussie Gold. I take it Aussie Gold show. I think you're talking about uh, the Aussie Gold Expo. Um, from all reports, I've talked to a number of, well, I've talked to a few suppliers who went down, um, and said it was a fantastic event. Um, I've talked to a few cust uh, customers who went down. They sort of thought it was a bit sparse, not a lot there, but what was there was very, very good. So, um, yeah, um, so... Yeah, I, um, I, I thought it was a, a pretty good success. I think the, um, I think the, uh, I think next year will be bigger and better. Um, yeah, so I, I think most of the, uh, most of them are good. I think that answers your question, mate. Um, I think everyone that went, like there was some deals on there uh, at the show. Um, and Jeremy, Jeremy asks here, can gold be in topsoil or only gravels? It can be in both. I've seen it in both. Um, so normally though, like when you talk topsoil, yeah, it can be in both, particularly the nuggets can be in both. So yeah, um, yeah, it can be in both. Um, Dean asked a question, how do you deal with black sand in your pan when you have very fine gold with it? Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. Um, fill the pan up with water. If it's magnetic, I've just, I had someone bring in some, uh, some black, I, I don't know what it is. It's, it's not that normal magnetic black sand. Um, but it's, it's not magnetic. So you can't clean it up with a magnet. A magnet would be a good way to get most of that black sand out. So what you do is you fill your pan up with water and I actually have got a magnet that fits inside one of those old film canisters, 
with a bit of string on it. And so I push it down into the bottom of the film canister, run it round and round and round. And then I pull the string out, I pull a magnet air up and it uh, drops all the black sand off it. So um, that's the, um, that's the uh, that's how I deal with that black sand thing, um, and you can pan it very very slowly. But there is three pieces of equipment that you could you can really clean it up with, and that is a blue bowl is probably the least efficient. Um, the a spiral wheel is probably the next best. Um, and then a, uh, what do they call them? Uh, 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 Miller's table. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah. Um, yeah. So there's a couple of, that, that, you know, all those things start to get more expensive as well. The blue bowls, I think are about 80 bucks or 90 bucks. Uh, spiral reels are like, you know, so it all... You know, it can get expensive sort of thing. So if you, they're really, like spiral wheels and Miller's tables are really more of a commercial level sort of thing. So, um, yeah. Okay, so what time we got? Um, yeah, so about 10 meters, uh, 10 minute meters. About 10 minutes we'll draw this, um, uh, we'll draw these pans out. So um, that will be fantastic. The other thing I did just want to mention uh, with the kids metal detecting is that I think I think the I think it's important to have realistically realistic expectations with the kids, right? Particularly if you're just starting out, I think it's important that you know you don't go out and say we're going to find fifty bucks, right? I think it's also important to um, set a time frame for them so they're left eager to go again. So you don't want to be out there for four hours and at the three hour mark, they're going, I'm ready to go. So I always, Finn's good for about 45 minutes at the moment. Um, but we go we go home after half hour, so we'll just duck down the road, find a little bit sort of thing. Um, yeah, um, yeah. So the other thing too is let's just talk about locations just quickly. So parks and beaches we've already talked about. We do we actually do a children's play uh, the playground a sandy playground. So. Half the time he's detecting, half the time he's down the slippery dip with his coins. Um, so the, the sandy playgrounds are good. Um, the beach, of course. And if you can find a creek like this one in the background, that's also worth a go too. So, um, okay. So we've got about 10 minutes left. Let me get, see if I can grab any questions here. Uh, Kylie asked where that picture is. It's in the... Uh, Central Coast of New South Wales. You'd have to check with Blake from Blue Dog Prospecting where that is. It's a spectacular little creek. So, uh, James, if you tr if you find a speci specimen, is it close to the source sometimes? How do you track it back to the source? Thanks, Ben. Please, if you get an answer. Okay, James. So, for me, um, specimens are normally coming... Well, gold is normally coming down. Gold's heavy, so it travels down. So normally where it's shed from is above there. Uh, you would have to know lo your local area in some of these really flat gold fields. Um, but the... Uh, like, for instance, ice has moved um, some, some gold around out at Warwick. Um, we're talking millions and millions of years ago. I've seen a piece of gold, about an ounce piece of gold, that was perfectly, looked like it had just fallen out of the reef. It was really sharp, really pointy, like pieces on it like a pin. That's how pointy it was. And then on the bottom side, it was just scrub flat, like it had just been dragged across something. The only thing 
I can think about uh, that would do that is ice. So I've thought about that piece of gold for a long, long time. So, um, but um, yeah. Uh, so yes, yeah, so normally downhill and don't forget the source may not be there anymore. So we're talking millions of years ago that that gold might have been deposited and um, it could have been in a quartz reef that ran like that and now the mountain's here and it shed that quartz reef, boom, gone. So there could be no source. And I believe a lot of us, well, some of the gold fields, that, certainly the real alluvial gold fields where you don't hear a lot of hard rock mining, that's what's happened, so. Um, uh, da, da, da. There was a question here I wanted to get to. Um, da, 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 da. Da, da. Steve shared a link there to a Miller's Table YouTube. Uh, um, Bradley just asked about the Monster 5 inch coil covers. I don't sell them yet. Uh, someone also asked much earlier on what I thought of the Gold Monster. I think it's a great machine. I think the RX probably probably out performance, in performance a little bit. Uh, Andrew, can you post the talk that the geologist gives at the Gold Day? Well, I don't know whether that'd be quite polite, but I'm going to corner him and have a few beers with him and say, righto, Monday Night Live, boys. So, um, and if not, I'm going, to, I'm going to take the camera out and see if I can do a uh, interview live with him. Uh, not live, but an interview with him to say, and, and do that full interview and maybe put it on the uh, Facebook page. Um, because I think that would be, like a lot of people want to do geology, uh, want, want more information on geology. I am trying to get a uh, geology course. Oh, clearly I'm not a geologist. You may have noticed that. It's a subject that I sort of steer clear away, uh, uh, away from. Simply because, like, I've got a lot of, um, if you like, knowledge that my, you know, my grandfather taught me and other people have taught me and I've picked up over the years and I've read and what have you. Um, but I'm not a geologist, so I, I, I'm not qualified to talk on that. Um, the, so I'm trying to get a geologist, a regular geologist on the show. I'm also trying to do, um, I, I, we hope at some stage to have a venue where we can have a geology weekend on a gold field with live specimens. Might be one day course, one day, uh, or it might be the morning's course, detecting in the afternoon. We, there's a lot of things up in the air. And I've been a bit all over the place the last couple of weeks. I haven't had any little quick lives or any of that sort of stuff because um, I've just been, I've had so much on. We're trying to organise so much and I think I've, well, I'm not, I don't think I have overcommitted myself. So that's why I've been a bit out there. So, but um, yeah. Um, so, so we, we, we're trying to get all this stuff happening um, because there's a, a real need uh, to get... The problem with geologists is some of, most of them speak a different language, okay? So, like, to find someone who can explain it in layman's terms is the hardest thing. I know, um, I know the, guys, the guy that does the talk at... Uh, down in Victoria every year. He's fantastic. Uh, I'm talking to him, but um, yeah. So um, yeah. Anyway, so um, was there something else I was going to uh, just talk about? So I just wanted to let you know as well, no show next week, no show the week after. Two weeks, no show. Um, so next week's Easter Monday, of course. Uh, the week after is the Nugget Hunt, so I'll be out at Carrara. I promise to you, um, I promise to you that I will do live streams from that um, event um, because it has got internet rece reception out there. So we'll be uh, live streaming randomly 
at uh, various times. So, um, yeah. So that um, that's that's what's happening. Um, so the next two weeks we're um, we're done. So um, right. What's a decent harness for larger persons out there? I would talk to the the my, my lab do one, but as far as harnesses go, sometimes sometimes the best harness is a reasonable backpack. So um, yeah, so a reasonable backpack can work just as well. Then you got a hydration pack as well. So just a bit of an idea there. Uh, Lisa, yes, I'm afraid that Monday nights now you'll have to. Uh, Give your kids attention. <laughs> um, righto. Um, da, 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 stickers, stickers. Uh, people keep asking about the stickers. Is that the same person? I will, I've got it on Natalie. Natalie's organising, um, she's organising stickers, bumper stickers. We are going to get some bumper stickers. So, um, and Dean asked a question, am I coming to Victoria? Uh, I haven't got anything planned as yet, Dean. So, um, yeah. Um, right, so happy Easter everyone. Let's do this draw. I'm going to close the draw off in about uh, 10 seconds. So, um, so last chance to share. Thanks to the Young Guns, a pan kit and a $70 bag of pay dirt. I've got two of them to give away tonight. Um, so I'm closing that off now. Let me uh, just get the randomizer up. Um, and we should, uh, yeah, Jer Jeremy says I should have given out some Easter eggs. Yeah, I should have. I almost did. But I thought, how on earth am I going to post them out with Australia Post? So everyone loves pay dirt. It's like Easter, you know. So, uh, yeah. So... That's what we uh, that's what we ended up doing. So uh, yeah, um, right. So let me just uh, run the randomizer here. Um, we'll just sorry. I'm just getting this fired up here. Technology is not my friend tonight. So um, yeah, um, that. Uh, that uh, that happens so right uh, okay so the draw for the pay dirt uh, the first prize goes out to Bill Bill's from Sydney Bill Rafida Rafia so congratulations Bill I'll contact you straight after the show the second winner is uh, Belinda. Belinda, I don't know where you are. Belinda Lee, congratulations, uh, Belinda. You're uh, you won this uh, pan kit, so I'll contact you straight after the show. So congratulations, guys, um, on winning that. Um, yeah, so the, I was going to do the chocolate, but no. So, um, yeah. Um, I don't know whether you saw through the week, there was a post come up there. The guy, there was a guy won an Ace 200 in November. And I've sent him a couple of mess, uh, messages uh, over the time, but no response. So, anyway, I'm scrolling through Facebook the other day, and I think it was on, I don't know, it might have been a gemstone fossicking page. I see this. I see this post with my message on it, and the guy asking, "Oh, is this for real?" Um, well, yes, it is for real. Um, and uh, I'd been trying to contact him for ages. So um, anyway, we hooked him up and got the uh, got him a machine a bit late. It's you know six months later, but uh, but anyway, that's what it that's what it is. We had it. I think we had it sitting aside here somewhere. So right. Guys, I hope you, I hope whether you whether you're a coin shooter or a beach ring person or a gold hunter, um, have a successful and enjoyable Easter. I'll see you in a couple of weeks' time, three weeks' time. Um, have an absolute ball and a very very safe 
Easter, most importantly. And uh, yes, I will see you all in uh, in a couple of weeks' time if I don't see you at the Nugget Hunter, which I'm really looking forward to, which is only really next week. So, Okay, guys, have a great little Easter, and I'll uh, see you on the other side. Thanks, guys.